Well, welcome into Ditch the Suits podcast. Steve Campbell here with my co-host, Travis Moss. We are excited to bring to you insights that we have learned in our experience working in financial planning, working with individuals just like you to really empower you to get the most from your money in life. I serve as the Chief Brand Officer at Seed Planning Group. Travis serves as the CEO at Seed. Seed is a fee-only financial planning firm. So we work with clients every single day, helping them build financial plans to help empower them. And we want to bring this information and insights to you. And I've been very excited about recording this uh, current series that we're in, talking about news and current events, because although these conversations can be challenging even for us to toe a line and help understand, it is extremely important to talk about, and this is probably one of my favorite ones, where we get to talk about news and the media and the impact. So Travis, this is the third episode in this series uh, talking about current events. Tee up this conversation as to why somebody who might be brand new to Ditch the Suits, why you don't want to tune out to this one today. Well, last time we did that, uh, an episode on the media and um, uh, the impact Samsung. on the media. Uh, yeah, we that was our most downloaded episode ever. At least it was at the time. Um, they they say you should avoid politics and money and those types of things and play conversation. You know, we might as well just take them all on because you got to talk about this stuff someplace. Right. And you got to unpack this stuff. And um, I've gone to the Internet on this. I've gone to academia and, and those who follow Ditch the Suits, you know, kind of how I I approach all that kind of stuff. But um, I think a lot of people talk about stuff that they don't know. Basically, is my point. They talk about stuff they've read in a book. They talk about best practices for practices they've never implemented and that type of thing. But we want to be able to have an intelligent conversation about this so that we make sure that we're not making decisions based on opinions that could potentially hurt us. Or if we are making decisions based on opinions, we understand that they're opinions. Um, we want to be able to look at current events that are happening, the things that people are talking about. And we want to know whether or not our reactions are going to cause us to regret um, our decisions long-term, right? Like we, we don't want to be years from now looking back going, boy, I really read that magic eight ball wrong and look at what it cost me. So today we're going to talk about how the media uses politics, social issues, and market volatility to essentially hold us hostage and how maybe we can identify this is happening. And I've got some really cool stuff that I found that I'm, we're going to do a little bit of script reading here because I want to make sure that I get it correct uh, to build our argument up, you know, on this topic. But um, basically, how do we identify if we're being held hostage or or if somebody's trying to influence us? And then how do maybe we take advantage of that for our own personal financial gain? Because it is a game, okay? It is it, TV. If you turn on the TV or the radio, it is entertainment. Whether yep. you think it's news, whether you think it's educational or whatever, um, they're trying to sell ads. They're trying to get people kind of tuned in and stuck on the channel. There's got to be some type of entertainment value to that or um, emotional tie to it. And so we need to unpack that a little bit to understand what's going to be going on here. Um, or what's been going on here? You know, we talked about at the last election cycle, so the midterms, I think is when we did that article, that that series on the media, our last one. So it was around, what, 2022. Um, and we really talked about the negativity and, and how, you know, it seemed like so much of everything is like existential threats and the war on everything and state of emergencies. I mean, like, and all that kind of stuff. So how do you figure out the true, you know, risk of an issue to you Love that. and therefore what maybe you personally should be doing? Because when you see something on the news, the question is, is, is that going to impact you? Yep. And although that it might be something sad that happened to somebody else, what is that effect for you? Mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and, and if you take action, how does that change, set up your life to change? Um, for positive or negative versus not taking action. Let's take a quick break to hear a word from your sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Seed Planning Group. If you're looking for a life-giving experience working with a financial planner, then Seed is here for you. Seed is a fee-only financial planning firm with a fiduciary obligation to put your best interests first. If your goal is financial freedom and independence without sales, products, or really glorified salespeople, then check out Seed Planning Group today. 
you can visit www.seedpg.com. That's www.seedpg.com. And the best part, you can schedule a free consultation to find out if their fee-only planners and their process are right for you. Yeah, so giddy up. What a fun conversation we're going to have today. As you said, last time this was picked up by Samsung. Um, if you guys are fans of Ditch the Suit, smash that like button, share it, leave a comment. Let's get this one on the map because, again, I think this is a conversation that needs to be brought to the forefront. Let's have conversations about things that you know people don't want to talk about but are, are influencing you one way or another. So today we want to talk about the media and the news. So Travis, you love being Nancy Drew, doing your due diligence, going on the internet and going on the dark web and figuring out information. <laughs> what, never what? been on the dark. I don't actually know how to get to the dark web. He'd get lost, folks. But, yeah. but talk to us about what you're discovering. Although I would like to, because research. you know when you Google anything anymore, you can't get an answer. I was googling something today, and it doesn't matter what you know methodology I put the words in. It will not let me do a Google search for certain topics. It was crazy. Um, when you mentioned Samsung, what you meant was Samsung, for some reason, they liked that particular episode or their algorithm liked it. And so if you had bought a Samsung TV or, or something, um, we, and you downloaded their podcast stuff, that was the episode that was like the primo download. So that's for, for those that aren't aware of what Steve's talking about with Samsung, that's what he's talking about. Um, so I go out and, and, and I'm, you know, Googling, why does the media seem so negative? I mean, couldn't good find, question, right? You couldn't like, find an answer. Like, well, every time I turn it on, you know, there's mostly people yelling about other people being idiots, mm -hmm. right? Like how often you turn it on, they're like, oh, you know, it's great. Everything's great. It's, it's just not like that. So, um, I came across a website for the state university of New York, um, called courses.lumenlearning.com. And this is a particular course. And, and you can go, you can read the entire course yourself. Have fun. You know, this stuff is out there. And so I'm going to kind of, I'm, I'm going to read part of this script uh, from the class um, just to kind of set it up because I was surprised that they come right out and say this stuff. I, I thought that like, Maybe it was implicit or maybe it was, you know, unconscious or like, I, I didn't know that there's actually theory in this and that they do it on purpose. I guess maybe I did know that, but I didn't want to believe it. But this is according to this course on, you know, the State University of New York's got their name on. It's published online. Concerns about the effects of media on consumers and the existence and extent of, okay, well, I'm sorry. Let me go backwards. The title the media's primary duty is to present us with information and alert us when important events occur. Concerns about the effects of media on consumers and the existence and extent of media bias go back to the 1920s. Reporter and commentator Walt Lippmann noted that citizens have limited personal experience with government and the world and posited that the media, through their stories, place ideas in citizens' minds. These ideas become part of the citizens' frame of reference and affect their decisions. So this is back in the 20s. They kind of figured out that, look, you're not running around having all these experiences yourself. So let us tell you about the experiences and therefore build those kind of images in your brain for you. Yep. Studies in the 30s and 40s found that information was transmitted in two steps. With one person reading the news and then sharing with friends, people listen to their friends, but not to those whom they disagree with. This has diminished the effect of the media's role. So basically what they're saying there is, you know, they figured out in the 30s and 40s um, is somebody gets an idea and then they talk to other people about it. And then other people are influenced by that, but only if they agree with them. If they don't agree with them, you know what that looks like. You've seen current to politics today. That's what that looks like. In the 70s, there was a new theory that hypothesized that media developed a person's view of the world by presenting perceived reality. What we see on a regular basis is our reality. Media can then set norms for readers and viewers by choosing what is covered and discussed. So the media has figured out by the 70s that if they say it's real, it's real. And if they ignore it, it's not real. And you're pretty much going to kind of go along with that because otherwise, how else would you hear about it? Hence, some of the impact of social media and people putting things out there that the media didn't. Well, what does it do? It challenges reality that they're trying to control for whatever reason, right? And this is not a political thing. This is done on both sides. 
So yep. I don't care what camp you are, even if you're with public radio, there's a bias in all of, of media to whatever kind of story they're trying to paint. And they write it down for us so that we know about it. And this is very important because it in, it's going to influence how we want to take action. One way that the media affects observers is through framing. So this is a technical term, framing. Creating a narrative or context for a news story. The news often uses frames to place a story in a context so that the consumer understands its importance or relevance. It also affects the way that the consumer processes the story. And there's a couple of different ways that they do framing. And this may be overly um, simplified, uh, but I didn't want to read the entire class. You can go do that yourself. We'll make sure that we get a link to you. Or if we forget to, just ask us. We'll give you a link. Episodic framing occurs when a story focuses on isolated details or specifics rather than looking broadly at a whole issue. So somewhere in a newsroom, when they're trying to figure out what to share with the world, they're talking about how to frame it. Episodic framing might be one way that they do it. Thematic framing takes a broader look at an issue and skips the numbers and the details. It looks at how the issue has changed over a long period of time and what's led up to it. So for example, a large urban city is dealing with the problem of increasing homeless population and the city has suggested ways to improve the situation. If a journalist focuses on the immediate statistics, they report the current percentage of homeless people, they interview a few of them, and they look at the city's current investment in a homeless shelter, the coverage is episodic. If they look at homelessness as a problem increasing everywhere, so there's homelessness everywhere that's increasing, um, and discuss the trends in the city's attempt to solve the problem. So what is the city trying to do to fix the problem? The coverage is thematic. Episodic frames may create more sympathy, while thematic frames may leave the reader or viewer emotionally disconnected and less sympathetic. So how I present an issue to you, I know will impact whether or not I'm going to strike a nerve and whether or not I can get you to do something I want you to do. Think about it with investing. Yep. If I say the market is down 10% this month, holy cow, that is horrible. People have lost 10% of their money. People are hurting everywhere. That's very different than I said. Than if I said the market went up 100% in the last three years and it's just corrected back about 10%. We're still up 90% though from where we started three years ago. One of them, you're like, okay, no big deal. One of them, like, you're like, oh my God, I'm losing all my money. Mm -hmm. That's the difference in framing. And it can be done on purpose and is most often done on purpose. Yeah. And I just want to say, partner, kudos to you. Um, I know there's a lot of behind the scenes for developing a podcast and the amount of time that you put into preparing notes and whether it's, you know, from course material that kind of felt like an audio book there for a little while. It was nice just listening to you explain that to us, but there's so much time that you put into these notes because again, you're not trying to convince as much just bring information to individuals that can provide that filter for them to how to look at things and how to right. look at the world in this framing, uh, I think is really important because I think what helped that episode that we did a year and a half ago or whatever take off was our whole part of this show is to help you get the most from your money. But the other component is your life, the life right. of the people, the things you care about, your values, your children, your parents, whatever it may be, your community. If we are all sucked into our TV every single night and being fed information that is a negative tone or is being framed in a certain way, that analogy that you just shared can, can totally change the complexity or how you deal with your children. Because if you're watching the nightly news in that yep. example you just shared, stock market's down 10% this month, you are instantly thinking about your finances and your kid walks in the room. You, there, there is no way you're going to be able to engage with them at an emotional level that they deserve because now you're terrified. You want to go check your bank account. You want to go sign into your Charles Schwab or your Fidelity account or your 401k because the media has positioned a certain headline to incite right. some kind of reaction to you. The life component can be totally put on hold because fear can be underlining 
um, position in our life that we don't realize is slowly eating away at our joy and the way we see the world. And I think it's hard because I remember during COVID, John Krasinski, I was a huge fan of The Office. He came out during the middle of COVID with this idea of some good news where he just every day put his iPhone up in front of his desk and shared positive stories. As much as they were heartwarming, you get to a certain point where you just stop tuning in because positive news stories, I think as much as they make us feel good, there's a sensationalism to negative stories that are kind of, they do something to us. Mm -hmm. But if you aren't careful, the more you listen to that negativity, the more it can eat away at you. So I think right. providing this framework, you know, framing, and I think there were some other examples too, uh, real life that you wanted to share, mostly around uh, presidential candidates and how this has affected the media over the well, years. Frame, you know, when you're afraid of something, when 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 I make you emotional mm -hmm. um, and make something important to you, or make make you think that okay, I need to be worried about this threat. Yep chances are you're going to keep, well, thank you for making me aware of that threat. What else do I need to know? Yep. If I said there's nothing to see here, okay, thanks for letting me know. I'm going to tune out. I'm going to go play in the yard now with my kids. There's a complete different emotion that happens when you get good news, when you turn into the news and you get good news versus when you get bad news. Um, framing can affect the way that we see race, socioeconomics, um, other generalizations, they say people vote for it with their wallets. So I can take financial issues and I can tie it in politically. I can galvanize people to think that one person's costing them money or one person could make them money. Um, I found that this was fascinating. These are stats from the same article or from the same class. Again, this is a very long class and I, I think it's worth a read. Um, and I didn't find the class at all to be politically biased. So let me just throw that out there. I found it to be fairly neutral. So, um, but this is content from, from that particular class. That, and, it, and it goes like this. Um, cable news coverage of presidential candidates in 2012. So that was Obama and Romney. It found that CNN ran stories with a positive tone regarding Obama 18% of the time. And a negative tone 21% of the time. That surprised the heck out of me, honestly. I don't yeah. know what the problem they had with Obama was. But they only talked about him positively 18% of the time. They talked about him negatively 21% of the time. Um, Romney, who was running against him, they were only positive for him 11% of the time. And they were negative on him 36% of the time. And you go, okay, you know, maybe you can be more negative on that guy than the other guy. I don't know. Um, MSNBC, 39% positive for Obama, 15% negative, 3% positive for Romney, 71% negative. Okay. That's pretty extreme. Fox who was like the other end of the pendulum, 6% positive for Obama, 46% negative, 28% positive for Romney, 12% negative. Um, According to the Harvard Kennedy School, Shorenstein Center for Media Politics and Public Policy, so this is another website that you can go to, um, regarding the 2020 presidential election. So this is kind of fast forwarding. I didn't find anything for 2016. So uh, 2020, CVS was positive about Biden 89% of the time, while only 5% of the time for Trump. That's not really balanced. It doesn't matter how much you hate the guy. Fox was positive for Biden 41% of the time, while positive for Trump 42% of the time. That's actually balanced. But that's an extreme. I mean, that's a, those are big differences. Interesting statistic. The tone of the first 100 days news coverage of a president's uh, uh, presidency, going back to Clinton, 67% of the articles run for Clinton in the first 100 days were negative. 62 for Bush were negative. 58% for Obama was negative. 80% for Trump were negative. They didn't have any um, statistics for Biden. Negative, 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 negative. Predominantly negative. Media don't like anybody. Right? They don't like Trump. They don't like Obama. They don't like Bush. They don't like Clinton. They were all bad, 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 bad. Everything they're doing is bad, 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 bad. 
According to Brookings.edu, again, I have no idea who Brookings.edu is. I just happened to fall across their story or their their site. The average gap in 2018 through 2023. This is where it starts to get into the finances. The average gap of two, between 2018 and 2022. So in the gap, what they're talking about, the modeled expectations based on historic trends and real expectations. So what they have is they have a model that says, here's consumer sentiment for, for how good or bad something is. Yep. And then here's the real economic results. And how much does that match up? <clears throat> The gap between in two, from 2013 to 2023, in order to be as bad as people actually think it is in that time period, inflation would have had to be an entire 2% higher and GDP growth would have to be an entire 3% lower. So people are getting framed this idea in their mind by the media that things are so negative and so bad they're not even close to reality anymore. And it's this extremism of only focusing on negative, 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 negative. And people are walking around going, it's really bad. It's really bad. It's so bad that it's beyond historical norms. Historically, we look at things more negative than it actually is. We always look at things as not as good as it, as it really is. Now we're looking at things as even worse than that. It's become even more extreme. Yeah, and and we'll make sure that we put in the uh, show notes some of these articles too. So, because I, I want to make sure that people know when we're bringing this up, Travis isn't bringing this to you with his personal opinion and how he sees things. This is actual real findings from surveys and studies for how the media has reported some of these things. You know, and I was even thinking about as you were talking about some of this too, the idea of getting on an airplane flight, like we don't normally think about what's happening while we're flying, but there are pilots in the front of that plane making decisions and seeing what's coming. They alert you when there's turbulence so that you can kind of prepare yourself. But then mm -hmm. for the most part, it's a flight. I think we kind of all wish the news was that way. Like prepare me when there's a little bit of turbulence so I know what to do, but don't make everything seems like the plane's about to go down because right. then it's, it's very hard to actually make decisions and to know when it's time to do something, when it's not the time to do something, but also too, to remove the biases that are happening, not only as you're consuming the news, but the advertisements that are all around that, that they understand right. that individuals are watching at that time. And so that there's money to be made by companies that realize that they know that certain individuals are listening at certain times or reading blogs. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go read the very next blog about XYZ and look at all the sponsored ads on the side. I think it's just wild how much information is out there and how much the internet and media knows about us. So there are, there are biases. So Travis, then talk to us about like, why is this idea? This is a financial planning show. Like, what does this have to do with media? Every other financial planning show talks about real estate investing and hot stocks. Why are you guys talking about the media and framing? Like, why is this really important when we're having conversations with clients every day for providing a framework or context for how to live in society in 2024? Hey guys, Steve Campbell with Ditch the Suits. Want to take one quick moment to make a big ask. Uh, if you haven't already, Travis and I would love for you to subscribe to this podcast. But if you haven't also, we would love for you to leave a five-star rating and review. Your rating and review will let other podcasters know that this show is worth their time. So let's get right back to the episode. And thanks for listening to Ditch the Suits podcast. Because clients, like you said earlier, I don't know if it was this episode or our previous episode, but clients' lives, there, there's an intersection between money mm -hmm. and um, the rest of their life where they're making decisions and they're being influenced and their mood is being influenced um, because of social pressures or be, because of pressures at home or because of just personal pressure putting on themselves to try to be at a certain level by a certain time. Um and that influences how we use our money or, or vice versa. The money can be influencing, you know, the pressures that are on us. And when we get revved up on certain issues, um, it's, it's very easy to become very extreme in that because it's very easy to start to feel like you're going to lose everything if you don't buy into that issue, right? Um, and, and what I've learned is that most issues are on a pendulum. They swing far enough until somebody says, okay, that's enough. 
And then it kind of quiets down. And then it swings the other way until it gets far enough and everybody says, okay, quiet down. You know, you've addressed the problem. We fixed there. We've worked on it. Stop screaming. You know, if like if you had a child that every time they got hurt, they just screamed for 10 hours straight. Like, you know, they got hurt 10 hours ago. They're no longer hurt. And they're just still screaming. And you, why are you screaming? Because I got hurt 10 hours ago. Are you hurt now? No. Why are you still screaming? That's that's kind of how this kind of works. Um, it's used for everything. And it's used, and we knowingly use it for everything. You use it for climate change. And then they'll tell you, well, we have to be extreme because we have to get people's attention. Okay, yeah, the plane's always crashing. Um, we use it for the market every single day. There's a reason why you should be afraid or how much wealth was I it drives me nuts when they go, oh, Zuckerberg lost, you know, a hundred billion dollars this month. No, he didn't. He couldn't have sold that stock if he wanted to. He's got too much of it. It's a liquid. Um, the, you know, you, you don't even understand how the system's working or you're framing it in a way that 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 less informed people can take a, a primitive concept and uh, get upset about it. And um, and that's that's. That's really not a fair thing. You're you're basically um, uh, being tricked into reacting to things that you know. I, I think ultimately align with really political or social issues. I, I think politics sucks in social and economic issues, and I think that uh, our our news now has become so much a twenty four hour, not even substance. It's not like where you you tune in and they're talking about policies all the time. You tune in and they're talking about a person and the threat that the person makes, you know, or or kind of trivial issues. But then they they hype it up so much that it's it's about identities and things like that. And it's these are things that are getting us to react and think that the world is way worse than it actually is. And they're we know that they're doing it on purpose. They actually say they're doing it on purpose. Um, and this is a hard issue. I mean, we talked about it. these are some of the hardest episodes that we do because these are the issues that play on our emotions. They're, they're, they're tugging on our heart strings. Um, and we're thinking, you know, well then who can I trust? Seriously? You're telling me I can't trust anybody. And it's not that you're saying that you can't trust anything. And we're not really here to like answer all those questions. It's just to point out that anything that, um, is 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 so extremely negative that the media is making it to be like this is this is an, a huge issue it's a you know it's, it just seems like such a threat anything that they're trying to do to invoke that much reaction from their viewers you've got to stop and say okay this is an extreme they're they're trying to get an extreme reaction that you know if if it's on like a scale one to ten and they're making it a ten it's probably really a six you know, it's just, you know, most things that happen are in the average range and average is kind of boring. So if I get anything slightly above average, that's interesting. I'm going to exploit that. Um, and I'm really going to blow it out of proportion. That's that, that would be the mindset of a marketer. And that's essentially what, when you turn on the TV or you turn on the radio, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to market to you. And since we're talking about finance, consider that, you know, the more extreme that news is, the more likely it's blown way out of context yep. in either direction. And unfortunately, not everybody listens to Ditch the Suits. So sh a lot of people are going to hear that news that's blown way out of proportion. They're going to go, okay, I got to act. And they're going to act. And they're going to do the worst things. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to buy low and sell high. They're going to sell high and buy low. That's the, the re that, that Wait, no, you're supposed to sell high and buy low. They're going to they're gonna buy high and sell low. Basically, you know, oh my gosh, it's crashing. We're doomed. Everybody's, this is it. And they'll sell at the wrong time. They'll buy at the wrong time. And it happens like clockwork. And so when you see these things happening, what I think that you have to be thinking about is, you know, I need to avoid destroying long-term value to get this short-term emotional relief. Because that's what they're doing. They're like, I can't sleep tonight thinking that I lost that $300,000 um, in the market today. Or, or this year or whenever it was back to our last episode, you know, volatility on $3 million, maybe the, your account value drops to 2.7 million. They go, I can't sleep at night with this. I have to make a change. So I can go to bed knowing at least I won't lose any more. And that's what sinks into their head because we're playing the scarcity game as if somebody's taking it away from you and you can't ever have it back. Right. I'm taking it and sorry, it's mine. And nah, nah. and that's not how it goes. You're just, we're over, 
zealous with some of this stuff. So when you see that, you know, when, when somebody else's elevator is going down, when they're making the bad decisions based on fear and anxiety, and yes, you can feel sorry for them. And yes, you could try to talk them off the ledge, but you, a lot of people, you don't, you'll never meet them. You don't know who they are. So when you see these things happening, what you have to do is you have to be ready to take advantage of the situation. And you have three things that you can do. When everybody else is panicking, you can say, I'm going to panic too. And you can make the same folly mistakes that they generally make. Or when everybody else is panicking, you say, you know what? I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait this out. I'm going to see what actually happens. That's at least better than reacting to overblown, you know, super negative, well-framed things that are designed just to get you freaked out. Or you can say, ah, those people, they're getting taken advantage of right now. I'm ready to buy low or buy on the rebound, right? I understand what's going on. I can take advantage of this situation right now. Um, yes, it's, it's broader than that. You know, the, the concept itself, like how do I know it's not still going down, that type of stuff. But that's the mentality that you have to have, I think, to be able to deal with what's happening right now from the sense of bad news sells. And we don't want to buy bad news. If I just think about too, over the last, gosh, 10 episodes, 12 episodes you and I have done, if this is such a large conversation, because I know this might one might be hard, it's the news, it's politics, it's very hard to separate. If you just go back over the last 12 episodes, the net earning series that we did, taking advantage of situations, if you implement some of these ideas that Travis is doing with individuals every single day like you, we can't control what happens when you turn on the TV. We can control how often you turn it on. But if we focus on the things that are actually in our control, understanding how tax codes work, understanding the taxation of your accounts, understanding price to value, buying great companies, aligning our investments with our values, these are all things that folks you actually have control over. So I think we have to have these conversations around current events because we don't want to shy away from them. We want to be a, a voice of reason in the midst of it to not say, let's be careless, but let's make sure that we're empowering both sides of that teeter totter, our money and our life. Let's not spend the next 40 years just trying to build as much money as we can at the detriment to enjoying life because we're terrified every day. But let's also provide context in terms of how do we understand framing, episodic, thematic, some of these things you talked about to take advantage of situations where others might be more scared about. If you have a situation right now that you're not sure what to do and you're trying to search for information, reach out to Travis and I. If you're considering something and you don't know whether it's right or not and you just want to get a second opinion, send us in, uh, some information, head to ditchthesuits.com, fill out that contact us button. We love to hear from you guys as listeners. If you have certain topics that you want to hear about in the future, send us a note to as well. But as always, trying to bring you information to empower you to get the most from money is life. Thanks for being our guest on Ditch the Suits. And until next time, we'll see you soon.